Welcome to this tutorial where you see I've got three integrals and they may look totally different from one another yet they have a common format. And that format is often represented like this as the integral of an exponential function okay, e to the f of x and we multiply the exponential function by the differential of f of x and that's denoted by f dash of x. Let me show you. You'll notice they've all got this exponential function in, okay, e to the x squared, e to the 2 sine x, e to the 4x cubed. And if you differentiate the f of x here, the x squared, you'd get 2x. And notice how you've got something x here. In this example, we've got 2 sine x as the f of x, and if you differentiate 2 sine x, you'd get 2 cos x. So you've got something cos x here. And again, on this one, the f of x is 4x cubed, and if you were to differentiate that, you'd get 12x squared. And notice again how you've got something x squared here. So what I'm going to do is show you how we integrate functions that have this particular format. And to do that, what I'm going to do is take you back to the chain rule. So, okay, what is the chain rule? Well, the chain rule, you may remember, is that if we have dy by dx, this is exactly the same as me saying dy by dt times dt by dx. Some of you may use a du, for instance, in place of the t, but I prefer to use a t. Now suppose we had, say, y equals e to the t. You should know that if you were to differentiate this, then dy by dt would be equal to e to the t. And so I'm going to use this now and we'll just talk through a few differentials. So suppose I had, for instance, y equaled e to the x squared. If I was to differentiate this, I would need the chain rule. I would call the x squared t, so I'd have y equals e to the t. And differentiating that, dy by dt would be e to the t. In other words, e to the x squared. And that would take care of dy by dt here, and then I have to times it by the differential of t with respect to x. So differentiating the x squared with respect to x gives me 2x. Cleaning that up, I get 2x e to the x squared. Let's try a few more. Let's suppose I had y equals, say, e to the x cubed. In the same way, dy by dx would be equal to dy by dt, where t is the x cubed, so I get y equals e to the t, and that would be simply e to the x cubed. Multiply it by the differential of t with respect to x, and that gives me 3x squared. Clean that up, and I have 3x squared e to the x cubed. What about a trig one? Let's try a trig one. Let's say we have y equals e to the sine x. In the same way, t will be my sine x, so I'll have y equals e to the t, and differentiating this via the chain rule, dy dx will be equal to dy by dt, which is e to the t, or e to the sine x. And then it's multiplied by the differential of sine x, which is cos x. Okay, so I have these three results here. So what does this mean? Well, in terms of integration, okay, it means that if I was to integrate 2x e to the x squared, okay, with respect to x, then I must have differentiated e to the x squared. So that would be e to the x squared, plus a constant, of course. Okay, so 
What does this one mean? It means that if I were to integrate 3x squared e to the x cubed with respect to x, the answer would have been e to the x cubed plus the constant. And similarly, if I was to integrate e to the sine x, cos x, with respect to x, then obviously I would have differentiated e to the sine x to have got that answer, plus a constant. OK, so you'll notice the pattern structure that we've got here. OK. Also, let's see what else we can deduce from this. Suppose that I had to integrate x e to the x squared dx, that I took off that constant too. What would I have differentiated? Well, it would have been e of x squared, basically, because if I differentiated e of x squared, you could see that I would get this result up here, 2x e to the x squared, almost similar to this. Only we've got a 2 here. And because there isn't a 2 here, it would mean that I'd have to multiply by a half. A half of 2 would be a 1, and so it would cancel it out. Plus c. Try this one. What happens if we adapted this one? Essentially had the same format, that is, the integral of, say, x squared e to the x cubed, dx. What would this one be? Well, it's got to have come from differentiating e of x cubed. That would have given me 3x squared e of x cubed. But because there's no 3 at the front here, I need to divide it out. So I put a third there plus c. All right. And what about one here? What do we get if we were to integrate, for instance, let's say 5e e to the sine x cos x with respect to x? Essentially, I would have had to have differentiated e to the sine x. We see up here that we get e to the sine x cos x, essentially what I've got here, except I've got a 5 in it. I want that 5, so I'll put the 5 in, plus c. OK, so what am I really saying? I'm saying that if we have OK, something along the lines y equals e to the f of x, if we differentiate this with respect to x, what we get is that dy by dx is equal to f dash x multiplied by e to the f of x. So if we reverse the process and integrate an expression like this, what we should get is this result. So in other words, if we had to integrate f dash x e of f of x with respect to x, what we should end up with is e of f of x plus a constant. And it is this idea that I'm trying to work on. So we we'll just highlight that. So using this particular formula, I should be able to do some examples. So let's just move that up to the top there, and we'll try one or two examples.